again, I'm in the scratch space where we develop problems or I find problems that to, to write up and share. Um, this one says find the sum. I do want to point out there's a, a link over here. Um, and I would click on that and watch the other person uh, do this. He's quite good at what he does. But anyway, uh, it's to find the sum over here. I will go to the whiteboard to do that. And I'll try to explain the steps that I'm doing in the notes, but I'll certainly talk through it. But I will go to the whiteboard to do that. Let me do that now. The first thing I would do looking at the problem is, um, if I saw this over here, I'd say, oh, it looks like a simple problem. It looks like a telescoping series, right? So let me write the problem down for you. It's the sum, n equals one off to infinity of this. The first thing I do is assume it's partial fraction decomposition. So let me write that down for you. So you get 1, 16n squared, minus 4n. I'm going to factor the denominator. Uh, let's see, 4n. And then you get 4n minus 1. Partial fractions, a over, let's see, 4n minus 1, plus b over uh, 4n. I want to figure out what the A and B are. And the way I do that, clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by the LCD. And you would get 1 equals A times 4N plus B times 4N minus 1. Now, I would pick easy numbers for N to do this. If I chose N to be 0, what would I get? I would get 1 equals, the A disappears, and then you get minus B. So what do I know? I know B is minus 1 now. All right, let me pick n equals, I'll pick another easy number. Uh, for arbitrary reason, I'm going to pick the number 1. And what do you get? You get 1, and then you would get 4a. Now remember, b is minus 1, and if n is 1, I'm going to get minus 1 times, well, that's 4 minus 1, which is 3. You get 1 equals 4a minus 3. Add 3 to both sides, you get 4, and that equals 4a. So A would equal 1, all right? So I know my, my partial fraction decomposition for this problem over here, <coughs> N equals 1 to infinity. I would get, let's see, A is 1, so I get 1 over 4N minus 1 minus 1 over 4N. And this is the place where I'd say that, you know, things are really kind of working out pretty nicely, that it's partial fraction and subtraction. Looks like it's going to be a telescoping series, all right? Let me get my eraser out. And I'm going to erase my work now. I don't need this anymore. And what I would do now is just write down an nth partial sum. Right? And to do that, I would just simply say n equals 1 to big N of this over here. And let's take a look. If, if you start with 1, you get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. That's 1. And again, why am I doing just putting 1 in over there? It's starting 1. You get uh, 1 third, and then you get minus 1 quarter. And then what happens next? You get this. You're putting 2 in, but you're going to get 1 over 7. By the way, those denominators are jumping up by 4. And it's going to be minus 1 over 8. Well, I don't see anything yet. Keep going. And what's next you're going to get? It's jumping up by 4. So 1 over 11 minus, and again, it's jumping up by 4, so 12. I'm still not seeing anything. Now, it's next thing jumping up by uh, 4 again, so 1 15th minus 1 16th. Yada, yada, yada. Plus, the last guy I'm going to get is 1 over 4 big N minus 1 minus 1 over 4 big N. And unfortunately, it's not what I'm expecting to see, which is a collapsing telescoping series. All right, so this is the part where most people would stop and say, I have no idea what to do. And I'll be honest with you, I struggled with it. Let me write this over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, write down things that uh, will integrate to those terms. All right, and the way I'm going to do that is I'll just put down um, this over here. I want it to integrate to those terms. And I'm going to say it's going to be x to a power. Because I want that divisor to be 4n minus 1. And how would I do that? I would say, let's think about that. Because I, I have to add 1 to the exponent, right? So 4n 
minus 2 dx. Now, if I did that, I'm going to get the denominator, certainly, but let, let me just put the numerator down. You're going to get x. I increase the exponent by 1. That would be 4n. If I increase that by 1, it's going to be minus 1. And you divide by that 4n minus 1. All right? Now, by the way, I want this to evaluate to 1 over 4n minus 1. And one way to do that, it just picks 0 and 1 over here. I'll put that down for you. 0 and 1. And the reason for that, if I take x to be z 1, I get 1 over 4 minus 1. And if x is 0, I just get 0. And it worked out beautifully. Let's do the next one. And again, I'm going to write this down for you. x. I probably use the same limits of integration. And I want something that integrates so I get a denominator of 4n. So it's going to be 4n. Let's think about that. 4n. Let's go to 4n1 uh, in the bottom, right? So I have to add 1 to it, right? Let me think about that. 4n minus 1 dx equals, well, increase the exponent by 1, so it's x to the 4n. And the bottom would be 4n. And it's going to be from 0 to 1. You get 1 over 4n. And again, a second a limit, uh, a 0, that's just going to evaluate the 0. So I think I did OK there. Make sure of that. Yeah, I think I'm all right. Let's keep moving. All right, so what I got, um, I can rewrite this sum as n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 16n squared minus 4n. I could rewrite this as the sum n equals 1 to infinity. If you recall, we wrote this down as a partial fraction, 1 over 4n minus 1 minus 1 over 4n. Right? I can continue to rewrite this. And let's just be careful over here. What do I get over here? I get an integration, 0 to 1, x, 4n minus 2, dx, minus 0 to 1, x to the 4n minus 1, dx. All right? All right. What are you going to do now? Uh, I guess we'll look at this over here, and we got it... Um, use a theorem to do this over here. And there's something nice about, um, you know, knowing a lot of theorems. I don't know a lot of theorems, by the way, but if you did, you would know that you could interchange the sum and the integration symbols, provided that this function, which is x to the 4n minus 2, is greater than or equal to 0, on that interval between 0 and 1, by the way, uh, for all n. Well, our n's are going to be positive. That's true, by the way. And that, that, that seems to fit the description. Again, in the guide, we'll, we'll put the link down to the theorem that I'm using over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this over here, that the sum of an integration, I could rewrite that as an integration of a sum. All right, that's what I want to do. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're going to try to do and see what happens over there. And again, so is, you know, where's this stuff coming from? I guess if you knew a lot of theorems, it would be coming from that, all right? So what I want to do now is um, get my race route again. And let's see what happens, all right? So this is going to be equal to, I got that sum, right? So I'm going to interchange these things over here. So I'm going to say 0 to 1, sum n equals 1 to infinity, x to the 4n minus 2. I certainly want to be able to do that. Then I'll do the integration. Minus 0 to 1, the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, x, 4n minus 1. 
dx. All right, let me put this over here. All right, here comes my trouble now. I'm trying to figure out what these sums are. It looks so much familiar, but not <clears throat> that familiar at this point. So zero to one. <clears throat> I'm gonna rewrite the, um, I'm gonna pull one of the x's out, and I'm actually gonna pull out one over x squared. And I get the sum, n equals one to infinity. And then you get x, and let's see, to the fourth power raised to the n. We'll see if we can figure that out. And then dx minus zero to one. Do the same thing, by the way. I'm gonna factor out one of those x's, which is really x to the minus one. The sum n equals one to infinity, x to the fourth power n. All right, got to keep going. All right, let's take a look. These look geometric. And what I mean by that, if I write this down, by the way, these, these are really the same thing, so I'm just going to do one of them. So if you write that down, what would you get? I'll write this S down for you. And you would get x to the 4 to the first power plus x to the 4 to the second power plus yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna multiply both sides by x to the four. So you get x to the fourth times s. That's a sum, by the way, it's an infinite sum. And these are convergent because the, um, the terms are fractional. They're less than uh, one. How do I know that? Looking at the, uh, the integration, by the way. All right, so let's take a look. And um, that's gonna be what? It's gonna be x to the fourth squared plus x to the fourth cubed plus yada, yada, yada. Now I'm gonna subtract these two. I'm gonna get one minus x to the fourth times s. That's the left side subtracted. And the right side, what would you get? You just get x to the fourth to the first power. All these things are gonna be disappearing, by the way. If it's convergent, it's convergent series. So I know what s is. What's s gonna be equal to? x to the four over one minus x to the fourth. That's a geometric sum, by the way. You might have known that, just write that down. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this over here and write that down now. Equals zero to the one. It's gonna be one over x squared times that sum, which is x4 over one minus x4 dx. And keep going back, minus zero to one, one over x. I'm just copying this down, by the way. And that sum again was x4, one minus x4 dx. Well, things are shaping up a little bit. It's actually a lot, because I got rid of the sum. I'm gonna bring these two integrations together. As I do it though, I wanna simplify this. And for example, this would just give me x squared there, that would give me x cubed. So let's write this down. We get zero to one, x cubed, that's coming from the first term, minus I'm sorry, it's x squared. Made a mistake there. Minus x cubed all over 1 minus x4. All right, I'm looking at that. And I'm back to partial fractions again. Now let me write this down for you. So x squared minus x cubed over 1 minus x4. Well, I'm going to simplify a little tiny bit by factoring it. Let's say x squared. Let's see, you're going to get 1 minus x on top. On the bottom, it's going to be 1 minus x squared, and then 1 plus x squared. Let's keep moving. x squared, 1 minus x. And on the bottom, what do you get? You're going to get 1 minus x, 1 plus x, and then 1 plus x squared. All right. Now there is a conditional cancellation over here, and it's saying if it's not equal to one. Now we're getting close to one, but in the integration you can certainly do that limit, and that's fine, by the way. These would cancel off. And what would you get? You get x squared over one plus x, one plus x squared. All right. I'm gonna do partial fractions on that, and I still, you know, still more work to do, but I'll write this down for you. 
and one's an irreducible quadratic and one's linear. So I'm going to say a over 1 plus x plus b x plus c over that irreducible quadratic, which is 1 plus x squared. Multiply both sides by the LCD. You're going to get x squared equals a 1 plus x squared plus bx plus c times 1 plus x. Well, again, I'm going to pick some easy numbers. And the first one I'm going to pick is x equals minus 1. You can get 1 equals 2a. And the reason I chose minus 1 is it's going to make that second term disappear. So now I know a is a half. Now, I don't know what b and c is yet, so I'm going to try another number. I'm going to try x of 0. And if you do that, I get 0 here. Let's see, a is a half, so I get 1 half times 1 plus, well, if, it, if x is 0, I just get c. So now I know c is minus 1 half. Now, so what I'm going to choose now, an easy number, 1. What does that give you? 1 equals, remember, a is a half. That's 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus b minus 1 half, because c is minus 1 half. And then if I chose 1, I get 2 over here. All right, so I get 1 equals 1 plus 2b minus 1. So 1 would equal 2b or b would equal 1 half. Boy, that was a lot of work. Let's write that down now. So this is going to be equal to, let's see, a is a half. So I'll put this over here, 1 half over 1 plus x. Let's see, then plus, it's going to be 1 half, that's what the b is, right? So 1 half of an x, and the c was minus 1 half. And that's over uh, 1 plus x squared. All right, now it's sort of, you know, a little bit of work over there. And I'm going to just erase this work now because I'm, I'm kind of done with the partial fractions. And believe it or not, some people actually do that in their head. I couldn't do that in my head, by the way. But I'm going to put the integration down again. All right, so what's the integration? The integration is actually this thing up here. I haven't done that yet. So what do you get? I get 0 to 1. I get 1 half. 1 plus x. Looks like an easy integration, right? Plus 1 half of an x minus 1 half over 1 plus x squared. And that's dx. I'm going to erase this partial fraction business down. I'm kind of done with that too. Okay, time to do the integration. And it doesn't look that bad. I'm going to factor out a half. It's going to be 1 half. I'm going to kind of split it up now. Get 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x dx, plus 1 half, 0 to 1, x over 1 plus x squared dx, minus 1 half, 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. These look like relatively simple integrations to do. And I'll do one at a time. I'm going to do the first one, which is going to be 1 half. That's going to be the natural log of the absolute value 1 plus x evaluated from 0 to 1. The next one's a little more complicated. And what I want to point out is if I use u substitution over here, kind of write it down. It's going to be 1 plus x squared. And du would be 2x dx. So I think I could, maybe I could do that in my head, by the way. And I'm going to say one quarter, and then I would get, uh, you know, that, that the reason I'm saying one quarter, I'm putting a two. Maybe I should put that down. I get the two x dx, which is just just one du now, and the one plus x squared was just a u. So I get the natural log, the absolute value. I got to be careful here, right? It's going to be um, that u substitution, so it's one plus x squared. And the limits of integration on that are going from 0 to 1. We'll do that later. Last but not least, I got this 1 half. And I recognize that to be the arctangent. 
and that's going to be from 0 to 1. Well, let's do some work. And the first thing I see over here is 1 half, the natural log of the absolute value of 2, which is 2. And if I put the 0, I'm going to get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So that's just, um, I'm not going to write that down. Then you get 1 quarter, the natural log. That absolute value is kind of ridiculous there, isn't it? Because it's just, it's, it's greater than 0. Uh, but if I put 1 in there, I get 2. I'll put that down. And if I put 0 in there, I get 1. And again, the natural log of 1 is 0. And then I get minus 1 half, the arctan of 1. The arctan of 1 is pi over 4. And then it's going to be minus 1 half. Oh, arctan is 0, 0, so I don't need to write that down. All right, so I got I got a closed form of it. It's going to simplify a little bit. And the first thing I notice is it, it, I got two of those ln2s. And what's that going to give me? Three quarters of a natural log of 2. And then what I get? I get pi over 8. Now, I like to pull things together. I'm going to say a common denominator of 8. And then I get 6 ln2s minus pi. And I'm going to use rules of logs. ln, that's 2 to the 6th power. That's 2 times 2 is 4. 8, 16, 32, 64. Minus pi over 8. And we are done. All right, so if you look back over the notes, by the way, I can certainly type it up for you. I'm always wondering, did I get that thing right or did I make a mistake somewhere? So I also want to point out in the notes, I put SAGE code down for you. And that's SAGE math, by the way. It's called SAGE. But so I put the SAGE code down. And, you know, SAGE has no trouble doing this at all. I might have trouble doing this and you might have trouble doing this. But SAGE does not have trouble doing this. It actually comes up with the sum. Now, when SAGE comes up with the sum, I want to point out what it told me is it told me it was uh, minus pi over 8. And then it said plus 3 quarters of a natural log of 2. Is it the same answer? It's the same answer. If you look at this over here, that's what we got. That's what Sage got. Now, I don't, I don't uh, really study Sage software too much, but I guess if you could look at their source code, you could probably figure out they did the problem. I don't think it's the same way that I did it or the way the other guy did it. Uh, by the way, there's similarities between uh, people's work, by the way. But I want to point out that when you're looking at other people's work, let me just go through that with you. When you're looking at other people's work, by the way, and I do recommend it, you're going to see variances. You're going to see him explain things differently than I explain things. Maybe he's quicker at something. Maybe he's slower at something. Maybe he spends more time on something. And it's, it's nothing you want to start paying attention to, that look at what people do, look at how they're explaining stuff, and no one has a monopoly on the right way, by the way. So look around and, uh, you know, certainly try it yourself. Thank you.